Hello, I'm Susan Regan, host of Connecticut Valley Views. And today I have the distinct pleasure to be interviewing my special guest from the Wadsworth Anthenaeum in Hartford, Connecticut, Jeffrey Brown and Matthew Hargraves. Mr. Brown has led the Wadsworth Athenaeum Museum of Art as the Chief Executive Officer since April of 2021. And also he had served as a member of the Board of Trustees since 2012. He is now responsible for the overall leadership, the vision, and the strategic direction of the organization and its staff. Mr. Hargraves, PhD, has been serving as the newly appointed director since July of 2022. The selection of Hargraves by the Board of Trustees concluded an extension, extensive seven-month national search process and completes the museum's transition to a distributed leadership model. First announced by the board last November, the roles of CEO and director will be split into two separate positions, enabling the institution to better seize opportunities in a changing museum environment, consistent with its evolutionary heritage. Now, Jeff, uh, since May of this year, the Wadsworth has featured the exhibition, I am seen, therefore I am Isaac Julian and Frederick Douglass. It is Sir Isaac Julian's immersive multi-screen film installation, Lessons of the Hours, anchors this exploration of Frederick Douglass' reflections on image making, <clears throat> race, and citizenship. Co-curated by Louis Gates Jr. and Sarah Elizabeth Lewis and presented in collaboration with the Amistad Center for Art and Culture. Would I be wrong in saying, Jeff, that the exhibition is an entree into somewhat a more diversified mission objective for the Wadsworth? Well, thank you very much, uh, Susan, for having us. And I think that uh, uh, it is part of living up to our obligation as an encyclopedic museum. We cover in our collections a span of 5,000 years of, of, uh, of humanity, and we are trying to touch in a much broader way tell broader stories that are much more engaging with our uh, our communities. I mean, it, it we have an incredible collection of Baroque paintings. We have an incredible collection of American paintings in Hudson River. We have many collections, as Matthew will talk about, that haven't been seen for years. And we're just trying to present a, a broader perspective to the community and, and tell different stories. It, would you say that this is, have you actually had discussions with the people who are members and people and visitors to the museum would you say that they have actually asked for it or you have somehow or other felt that the mission for the museum need to take a slightly different direction well i think any museum has an obligation to reflect the communities that it serves and the wadsworth in particular is the oldest continuing operating art museum in the united states has done what I would describe as a better job than many in terms of of doing that. Uh, but you can always continue to evolve and uh, continue to look at uh, at different approaches, which is all we're we're simply trying to do. Now, along the lines of have we heard from the community? Yes, we have heard from the community. We do regular surveys of our uh, uh, our guests. We participate in national surveys of museum goers. There's certainly a much greater demand to show more diversity in the uh, uh, in the galleries that uh, uh, that we display. We just finished 14 focus groups around the city of Hartford talking to different constituencies to get different ideas. And, uh, you know, maybe I should, you should turn it over to Matthew. In fact, we totally developed a new approach of even how to develop an exhibition. Matthew, maybe you could talk about the hair uh, exhibit as an example of, of getting community input uh, for our exhibitions. Yes, Certainly. please. Please do, Matthew. Please expand. Yeah, certainly, Jeff, I will. And, and Susan, yeah, I would reiterate uh, what, what Jeff said and say that our mission today is still the same mission we had when we were founded. It's to bring great art and the greatest art we can to our community. And uh, our mission from the very beginning was, was pioneering, innovative, and forward-looking. And uh, that is, that is still, still our mission today. And great art is for everyone. And uh, that is still uh, very much at the forefront of uh, of what we do. So whether it's bringing the work of uh, Isaac Julian to our community and bringing him to our city here in dialogue with Henry Louis Gates and Sarah Lewis, 
uh, whatever we do, it's it's about bringing uh, the greatest art we can to our to our community. Uh, we are currently engaged in uh, the final planning of an exhibition opening in March next year, and that exhibition is called Hair uh, 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 Styling Identities: Hair's Tangled Histories. And this is a, a completely different uh, model for us in the planning of an exhibition. It's drawn almost entirely from our own collection. It explores representation of of hair, the cultural histories of hair, hair in art, hair made from art, uh, art made from hair, rather. Um, but rather than simply making this exhibition in isolation with a single curator here uh, within the museum, we have a team of colleagues from across the museum working directly with the community. We have a community advisory panel who's been with us from the very beginning of the exhibition, from all uh, kinds of backgrounds and traditions all of them telling their own hair stories uh, as we proceed through the exhibition. And their voices will be reflected uh, within the exhibition and in the interpretation of the exhibition. So from uh, ancient art uh, through um, uh, Renaissance, medieval, non-Western uh, to contemporary art, this exhibition will, will cover the broad range of, uh, of hair and, and the history and representation of hair. But with, uh, with a strong voice from the people in our community who've shaped it and will be telling their stories as much as uh, broader cultural stories about hair. Well, let me ask you, what exactly is the definition for our viewers of a curator? Are, are, does that person, that person specialize in the particular exhibition that you have and presents it to the people or what is their role? I would say curator has a twofold role. One is the first and foremost, the care of a collection. Uh, the traditional title was, is really a keeper, a keeper of a collection. Uh, so a curator is responsible for a group of objects within a, within a museum. And, and their, their purpose is to make sure that those objects survive, they're interpreted and presented in the current moment, and also that they survive for posterity so that they can be enjoyed in the future. The other role is to select from those objects and to present them and to present them in an engaging way that is understandable. There's a, there's a, there's a role for a curator in taking the knowledge they have of those objects and transmitting that, transmitting a kind of knowledge so that other people can, can learn, but also in transmitting, I think, an enthusiasm or a passion for those objects uh, to a wider, a wider public. Um, so there's a, a dual role. One is a, a, a kind of a role of maintaining. The other is a role of uh, a, a mission role, if you like. It's a kind of evangelical role. It's a role that it's about making things exciting uh, for a wider audience. So there are two roles that are in a sense in, in tension, a kind of dynamic tension. And one is uh, preserving, the other is dispersing in, in terms of knowledge and excitement. So those are the two roles of a curator. When we're talking about an exhibition, it's very much the second role. It's that one of taking and selecting objects, putting them together in a compelling way and uh, making them engaging for a, a, as wide a public as we can reach. Well, well, Matthew, do you find that once you have done one exhibition and does it evolve and does it give you uh, or does it generate the idea for a next exhibition so that there's a kind of a continuum uh, particularly if it's a popular ex exhibition, does that happen as well? Well, we are blessed here, Susan, with, I think it's it's fair to say, one of the greatest collections in the United States. Certainly it's the oldest and certainly one of the greatest. It's a collection that uh, uh, we almost, it's almost an embarrassment of riches here at the museum <laughs> that uh, has something that, uh, there is something here that appeals to everybody. Uh, it, it really, as Jeff said, is, is almost encyclopedic uh, in its range. Uh, there's material here that you could spend a whole lifetime and still not exhaust uh, the kind of uh, uh, the range uh, that we have in terms of uh, uh, looking at it, studying it and um, presenting it to our audiences. So there's never a shortage of material, even just within our own building uh, to present to uh, to present to people. So it is. There's always a reason for people to come to the Wadsworth Athenaeum because there is something here that will excite them and interest them. Uh, but we also have the ability to uh, take that collection and, as you say, uh, present it in, in temporary exhibitions. And one exhibition does certainly then lead to the next. There's always uh, 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 people here brimming with ideas 
uh, within our own uh, team, but also, yes, in terms of reaching out to the community. Uh, we're very blessed here with a community that uh, does engage closely with us and wants to engage with us and comes to us with ideas. And uh, we're, we're fortunate to be able to engage with them as we think about how we shape our program and working with this collection uh, as we move forward. And also working very closely, of course, with our partners at the Amistad Center for Art and Culture, who share space with us and have done for uh, almost 40 years now. Well, actually, that's a, that's a nice segue because I'm going to read a statement um, that you made uh, along the way, obviously, when you took over your new role. You said, I look forward to working alongside <clears throat> CEO Jeff Brown to lead the Wadsworth into the next phase of its dynamic future with an extraordinarily committed and professional staff and exceptional senior leadership team. We can reaffirm reaffirm the Wadsworth's rightful position as the leading arts institution in our region and reassert its international reputation as North America's most pioneering art museum. There are nearly limitless possibilities and I am excited by the chance to pursue and share them with diverse audiences. I would say that pretty well sums up what your mission statement is for the Wadsworth at this time. Would you say that? I, I would say so, Susan. I think a year in, I don't retract a single word from that uh, statement. I, I, <laughs> I cannot, I will not recant, as Martin Luther said. Um, I, I do, I, I do stand by that. I, I do think uh, it's been our historic role uh, to play that, uh, uh, to play that role of being this pioneering institution. We are different, actually, fundamentally, and it's it's good to to talk about this. And I'm grateful for the opportunity, Susan. Yes, we were founded in 1842 in a really interesting moment in American history. It was that dynamic moment where there was a sense of what will the United States be? What will it be in the future? Um, and uh, I mean, a difficult moment in our, in our national history, but what will it be? It was a, it was a real sort of uh, uh, sense of what, what will the future hold for this country? And the idea was to create a museum in the city that would help forge uh, 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 an American culture. And uh, that sets us apart from most other art museums in this country. Most were formed uh, here uh, 20 or so years later, uh, after the American Civil War, most museums were founded uh, on a much more European model of an art museum. They were, they were more designed to preserve something, to preserve a kind of culture, whether it's uh, emulating a European type of culture, or they were founded to preserve something that was thought to be uh, at risk of being lost. They were preservation uh, minded. But, but we weren't. From the very beginning, we were focused on uh, something that was forging ahead. That's not to say we're not interested in the past. We, we love it. We love our historic collections. We're absolutely passionate about them. But we're, we're, we're focused on thinking about them in a way that also looks to the future. How do those great works of uh, the old masters also shape the kind of thing that's being produced today? How can we inspire uh, people who are actually uh, young artists working in our city, our region today? Um, you'll come into our Avery Court, our wonderful modernist building in the museum. And uh, in about uh, a month or two's time, in the fall of uh, this year, uh, you'll see our fabulous fountain uh, actually running with water again for the first time in over 15 uh, years. And, and, and uh, credit to, to, to Jeff uh, for, for making that happen. And... Um, that's a fountain that was made, a statue in 1600, but it sits at the heart of the building that was uh, created in 1934, the first museum building in the United States in the international modern style. We've always been focused on fusing the past and the present. Uh, and the reason being that by putting those two things together, you can create something really dynamic for now and into the future. So we've, we're set apart from almost every other museum, I think, in this country in having this forward-looking uh, trajectory. So that's why I find it very exciting. So I, I certainly hold by what I said a year ago when I, I took on this position and uh, working to make sure that this museum does reclaim its uh, its place in, uh, in that in that pioneering uh, pioneering spirit. We have a wonderful exhibition opening uh, this fall, uh, the very first museum show of a fabulous contemporary photographer, Talia Chetrit. Uh, it will be a really spectacular exhibition. Uh, and, and affirming again our, our uh, commitment to uh, being being pioneering uh, in a, and it's built into our DNA. Well, another thing that strikes me, Matthew, I get the feeling that 
there the directive for the museum is not only diversified subjects and matter and educating people and so forth but a shall i use the word less snobbish kind of thing because sometimes art people who do not have um, a great deal of background or understanding of art whether it be contemporary or old masters um, or photography or whatever um, a, a more general feeling of bringing to people the idea if you don't know about it it's fine we're going to uh, you're you're welcome to come here and I I see I looked at some of the upcoming shows that you do have not actually shows they're actually um, opportunities that uh, an hour in the museum and learning about this and so forth talk a little bit about that um, I'm referring to specifically there are things about music uh, there's the architectural history of the Wadsworth itself um, there's also another thing called Franz Fanon, Black Skin, White Mask. That's a film. Uh, Sally Inman's Morning Ring with Philip Halbert. Can you talk about just a little bit about those things that are on specific dates coming up in the winter and in the spring? Susan, you, you used a great word there, I think, uh, which was um, encounter. And I think uh, uh, what museums can offer people is that fabulous encounter with great things, whether that is uh, a great work of painting, great work of sculpture, uh, a great work of uh, film, a great work of dance, uh, a great work of music, um, we can offer that as part of our broad arts program. Mm -hmm. uh, what unites all that is bringing the very best uh, of, uh, of art, whether it's from the past or the present, to our audiences. And as you said, uh, there's nothing, uh, we, yes, we don't want to be snobbish about that. Mm. Great art is for everyone. Mm. And everyone can have an encounter with great works of art. You don't have to have, you don't have to have read the textbook. You don't have to have a complete understanding of, uh, you know, the works of, uh, of Western or non-Western art or the works of, uh, of the history of ballet or music you can come here and you can enjoy what you see. And that's the core of, uh, of an, a great encounter with a work of, of, of art. It's enjoyment. It's a, it's a movement of, of, of the heart or the soul when you see something that uh, really engages you. That's, that's the fundamental thing uh, that we can, uh, we can offer people. I think we've all lived through very recently uh, a period where we couldn't even leave our houses. And I think uh, a lot of people experience that uh, that uh, uh, longing for getting back to actually uh, a direct encounter with um, great works of art. And, and that's what we can offer people uniquely. Uh, we, could, we could offer people lectures galore online, but that wouldn't be the same as sitting for even a minute or even 20 seconds in front of a great painting or a great piece of sculpture or listening to a great piece of music in our galleries or attending a great contemporary film. So that is what we can offer, I think, uniquely as a museum. And I really warmly encourage your viewers to, to come and have that encounter. And uh, if they haven't been uh, for a long time, to, to take that chance and, and have that encounter. Uh, if they've been before, come again and come regularly to enjoy that encounter with, uh, with these great works of art. We're, we're blessed here in our city and our region to have such incredible works of art here. Uh, they're unrivaled. Uh, you, you can see better things here than you can uh, in New York or in Boston or elsewhere in the country. Uh, and that's true. I'm not just saying it. So yeah. uh, I, I encourage people to come here and have that encounter. And it well, is not, as you say, uh, it isn't a snobbish thing. It, it, there's, there's no judgment. You can have any kind of experience. And, and the idea is to enjoy what you see. Yes, vertical well, approachability. Uh, yeah, I, that's a good <laughs> word. That's a great word, Jeff. Uh, approachability, and I think in particular, it's very important that when people think about coming to the museum, and we're going to talk about uh, membership and so forth in just a moment. But what I think is important that pr people bring their children at a very young age, even three or four or five years old because that's the beginning of the love of learning and learning about art if you start them young. 
You've got elderly people who appreciate it. Perhaps they had some background themselves. Perhaps they were a teacher of art um, earlier in their career. Or perhaps they were dabbled in art, weekend artists. Uh, and, and there are all kinds of reasons at different ages, but I think it's critical that people make sure that they bring their children and, you know, they gotta be well behaved and so forth. But don't you think that's the way to start? I mean, you know, in other words, and then you grow up with it rather than enjoying it uh, midlife. Let's say it's one of the it's one of the reasons that we open our doors free to the community uh, on the second Saturday of every month, where we do uh, very specific programming geared towards young children that has that create the opportunity to expose them to art. We have free art making kits and we do projects with them. We set up tables throughout the museum to provide exactly as Matthew was saying, an engaging experience with art, an opportunity to express themselves. But we try and also tie it in with what displays or exhibits are going on in the museum at that time in order to start to uh, to make that to, to make that collection. I mean, we're very focused on the breadth of our collection and the stories that we have to tell. You know, we were talking before about uh, uh, surveys. People, of course, come to a fine art museum to experience fine art. But if when you do the surveys and you ask them, what do you want most out of the experience? The first thing that comes up is, I want to learn something. I want to be exposed to different points of view. And I'd like to learn something new. I'd like to see something different. I'd like to see something I hadn't been exposed to before. So, you know, if you look just at the last few exhibitions that we did, you mentioned the Frederick Douglass uh, uh, exhibit going on right now, which is an extraordinary work by uh, uh, Isaac Julian. The, the exhibit before that was a contemporary glass uh, show. The exhibit before that was, uh, uh, you know, the famous colorist uh, Milton Avery, who got his start here in Hartford and specifically, you, you know, studied art here at the uh, uh, at the Wadsworth. And before that, it was a 300 year retrospect of Italian uh, uh, women artists starting from the Renaissance on. I mean, we, you know, there, there's a breadth of things that we can leverage the collection and different stories that we can tell. And that breadth of uh, exposure is one of the great strengths of the Wadsworth. Well, uh, you know, you've got you've got such a great team. Um, you've got, uh, I think, you have very firm uh, communication now uh, with the public, and I think it's important that this public. And I'm so glad you mentioned that uh, uh, free opportunity. Um, and I'd like to just talk very uh, briefly here. Uh, you can consider, for our viewers, you can consider membership. Uh, you can actually go to the website membership at the Wadsworth .org, mm -hmm. and all exhibition fees and calorie information is at Wadsworth .org. Um, I encourage the viewers to do this because this is probably one of the greatest treasures of the state of Connecticut, is this museum. And not only the contents and the exhibitions and the subject matter and the effort that's been put into it to open it to a more diversified group of people and ages and stages and demographics. And I think we, we need to recognize that if you're going to spend a weekend or you're looking for a special thing to do, to consider the Wadsworth and all of the wonderful things that are being done there. It will open a whole new world for you, and it will open a whole new world for your children. And I think it's especially important um, that you take this opportunity to do that. Um, I know that the fees are, you can certainly visit and pay that one day fee, but consider the membership as a long-term commitment. And not only that, but to support the Wadsworth um, and all of the efforts being put into it. Now, gentlemen, um, our time has gone very quickly. Any, any closing comments you'd like to make um, with regard to the subject? And certainly, um, if you want to give a phone number that they can call and ask questions, um, please do so. Well, I think, you know, you mentioned visiting the website, which is actually the best way to find out what's going on. There is always something new that is happening at the Wadsworth. We are re-examining all of our different galleries and looking at how to tell different stories, bringing new exhibitions. Uh, you know, I want to just uh, parrot one of the things that you said that's really critical to the museum. Like all our organizations, the Wadsworth is financially challenged right now because still uh, suffering 
some of the uh, uh, lingering impacts of the pandemic. And membership is one of the great ways to show your support for the uh, uh, the organization. Of course, it has many benefits. You can certainly access the uh, um, the museum as often as you want without paying that fee. You get to access other museums. But the most important thing is it's an opportunity to invest and vote with your dollars for the uh, future viability of the Wadsworth and to enable us to continue to do the incredible things that uh, uh, that we do. We rely on our members for the majority of support. Unlike other areas of the country, there's very little government support in uh, uh, Connecticut. The state has been very generous, but relative to other uh, areas, we've still got a, a long way to go. And we rely very much on the generosity of, of those of our closest friends that uh, come in all the time to, to see the art. Matthew, do you want to add anything to that? I would just add, Susan, I, I love what you said. And I would say there's no greater joy for a museum professional than seeing a crowded museum. And yeah. so I would warmly echo what you said and encourage people uh, to come and, and make the journey and uh, come and uh, re-experience the Wadsworth. Absolutely. Well, there you have it, viewers. Uh, it, it, we hope we have covered the subject matter that the viewers are interested in. I know that art and music, any of the creative industries that we have uh, are very important to people's development. And not only development, but during these times when there is so much stress, these things, the music, the art, and, and things that give real value to one's life, uh, not just sitting and watching TV, get out there, visit the museum, participate in your community, and support what a wonderful treasure, is, as I have said, that we have in Connecticut. So thank you, Matthew. Thank you, Jeff, for your time today. Uh, we're delighted to visit with you, and I'm sure we will be back to hear more about the Wadsworth Athenaeum in the future. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Yeah, we have to um, just take 30 seconds. There will be no audio. We'll just have so we can run credits running over this. So nothing will take as of now. Okay. So that, that was good. I hope we hit high points um, for yeah. you. Uh, we want it to be um, a good piece for you to be able to put on your website and sort of distribute it anyway. Here you can do so. Um, put it on your, you know, however you want to get it 